to you, it's your brother Larry, welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God. So powered by the Pastor Larry Daniel Center for Inspiration. <laughs> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gem soon upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on addressing the childlessness stigma. Yeah, coming from uh, Judges, the 11th chapter of Judges, 19 to chapter 13 and verse 4 of 13 this morning. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Father God, you are worthy of all of it, O oh God, and more. Be blessed in Jesus' name. We spend a couple of minutes together with your people this fine weekend. We ask, O oh God, that you help us at it. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Right, so we're back in Judges, and um, let's go to 29. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and passed through Mizpah, um, Gilead from Mizpah of Gilead. He advanced toward the people of Ammon. And uh, Jeff, the, before we go into the vow, let's tackle this one very quickly. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and then he passed through some places and was able to gather um, soldiers, volunteers, to follow him to battle. Now we see something here. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. That is a, um, something that threads through the entire book of Judges. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon her. You know, something like that. Throughout this book, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord. And it's something, it's a very, very big lesson for us. The Lord will choose them some judge and he will give him the Spirit so that with the Holy Ghost is able to do what God will have him do. Now, uh, that Holy Ghost too is what powers us today by the grace of God. And see what the Spirit of God made happen to him. It often brought them the necessary leadership skills particularly the, the capacity to convince people. Yeah, that's one big um, attribute of leadership. You must be able to persuade, persuasive skills, persuasive power, ability to convince people. So he went around, was able to convince people and to, you know, take um, volunteers to follow him, you know, and, and things like that. And that's exactly what has happened here, um, you know, by the grace of God. And it, it, we say the same thing to ourselves today. If you are going to be a Christian leader, the Spirit of God must be upon you to give you the leader, necessary leadership skills, yeah, to be able to do what God wants you to do. Praise the Lord. Without the Spirit of God, we are not going anywhere. We cannot do anything. Remember, Jesus said to the disciples, don't move. Hallelujah, because the role of the Spirit is so very, very important. Don't move until the Spirit comes upon you. Let's go on now. The next verse. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to me, when I return in peace from the people of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. Now, he made a vow based on some previous... Um, um experiences <clears throat> i need to explain this for us to understand very well the way their house was constructed at that time they 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 um how do i describe it they put the house on a little form of pedestals i'm sure you have seen some houses where um there are some pillars some short short pillars uh, three feet four feet all over and the whole house is built on top of those pillars something like that and then a little flight of stairs four five six you enter but there's some ground that you can see many times those their animals stay under that ground they stay under the shade of the building you know and all that so typically <clears throat> as you approach the house it was an animal that would come out from under that shade and so he made a vow to the lord Whatever comes out first to me, I'll sacrifice to the Lord. He had assumed that because of his previous experiences, he's one of those animals that will come out when he was making his vow, you know, unto God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So, um, and he said, I will offer it. So it was certainly, it was mind, what was in his mind was an animal, as usual. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And so, what we can talk about this is specificity. Whatever it is you are discussing with the Lord, be specific. This one, whatever comes out first, I will sacrifice it. <laughs> I think you should have been able, a bit more um, specific and probably would have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but got it done and life would have just moved on. Praise God. But he just says whatever. And whatever means whatever. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, let's, let's go on. So he advanced to the people of Ammon to fight against them and the Lord delivered them into his hands. 
and he defeated them in 20 cities, you know, to a very, very great distances. And then he came back to his house. And there it was his daughter coming out to meet him with timbrels and timbrels and dances. And she was his only child. And beside her, he had neither son or daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me because I have given my word to the Lord and I cannot go back on it. <laughs> you know, so the, the lady said, My father, if you have given your word to the Lord, uh, just do to me according to what has come out of your mouth because the Lord indeed has given us a great victory, you know, and they but do this for me, let me go and um, two months and bewail my virginity. I'll explain all that in a, you know. So, since he was his daughter, he couldn't be a burnt offering. He was a human being. He would be against their law. Praise God. But he, was still, he still felt very bad. He never expected a human being to be the one that would come out. He expected that one of those animals that used to stay, you know, somewhere there would be the one that would, you know, come out first and he would be sacrificed to the Lord. Well, it was his daughter now. So what he did was that the lady remained a virgin for the rest of her life. She, would keep, she couldn't marry. And that's why she said, oh, let me go and, you know, uh, bewail my virginity and this and that, you know, and all that. And, he, you, know, you know, he gave it. He gave, he gave her the chance to do that. So the, the lady went away and um, uh, spent some time, two months, with her friends, bewildered her virginity in the mountains. And after that, she carried out the vow. She knew no man. She never got married. She never got involved in sex. She was sacrificed to the Lord. That's what uh, it says. I'm going to jump to chapter 13 now. And then it says, um, again, the children of Israel did evil in sight of the Lord, as usual, when one uh, judge has... His tenure has expired, he has, he has passed and all that. They'll go back to all the idolatry. So as usual, they went back. Now from verse 2, it says, There was a certain man <clears throat> um, from Zorah of the family of, of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Okay, uh, let's talk about this, please. Um, um, the woman was barren. Now, in those days... There's nothing that, you know, they, they might even consider that a man could have a problem. It was always the woman. When the children are not, were not in the marriage, it was the woman. The woman was barren, <laughs> you know, and that was it. And that thing always, you know, brought about some stigma. And that's what I'm talking about on, on this occasion. This stigma that goes with childlessness. Um, I thank God that in some other climes, it is not so much like that. But in our own area here, that stigma is still there. And that is what drives people to do anything, you know, that, you know, that they could do to have, to have children. People really do almost anything because of the way we look at it. Ah, the woman does not have children. Ah, it's a barren woman, this and that, you know, and all that. You don't even know what the problem is. You don't even know whether the man is a problem. You don't even know whether... You know, it's some other circumstance and things like that. But there is a way it goes without even saying anything. It's unsaid, okay? But you at the attitude of people, the look, the, you know, and all those things, it makes those people feel uncomfortable. You don't even have to say anything. Already, there's a way you wear your face and they know what you are saying without saying anything. Yeah, they know what you are thinking, okay, without saying anything. Yeah, that thing is not good at all. It's not good at all. If God grants children, fantastic. And if God hasn't successfully make this blessing of children reach these people, it is still okay because they still love God. Hallelujah. They will be in heaven together with us. Hallelujah. And those of us, you know, who are children know that by the grace of God, we are going to be with these people, you know, in their old age. Because for some reason, um, many times beyond our understanding, they have not been able to bring about some um, children you refer to as their biological children. Believe me, they don't have to be biological. There are children, they are all still your children. Whether biological or not, they are still children. They are still their children. We are still around them. We are still their children. And we must have that understanding that when somebody or when a couple is childless, there's nothing to stigmatize about them. It just so happens that they do not have children. Let me uh, look for some illustration. I'm somebody who really enjoys good quality football, especially when it's a righteous type of football like Arsenal. I really do enjoy. Are you listening to me? Now listen. For some reason, as much as I love this game, I don't know, I can't play it. I, when we were young children and everybody would play football, I was just not the person to choose for football. Well then, nobody stigmatizes me because of that. 
I will give some other examples. There are some people, when we are in church and everybody is dancing, when it comes to them, just don't look that direction. They are dancing totally out of, out of tune. They are, they are steps that are not following the beat. They, when it comes to dancing, it is not their thing. Nobody stigmatizes them because of that. Amen? There are some people, when they begin to sing, in one song, they will take up to three or four keys. <laughs> they will jump up. Nobody stigmatizes them. Because, you see, God hasn't just given them that particular gift or, or the gift of dancing. God hasn't just given that person that particular gift. Mention so many other gifts and things that God has not given somebody or the other. Now, these ones, God has not just given them this gift of children. And the way you look at you don't. nobody bothers me whether, you know, I'm able to play football well or not. Nobody bothers me whether I'm able to sing very well or not. Nobody bothers whether I'm able to dance very well or not. Nobody bothers whether I'm good with words or not. Some people who went to school together, they cannot speak as articulately as I'm speaking. They can't. Okay? It's just the thing. Some people, when they read, for example, you, you notice when I read, I mean, very, I can read the Bible very, very fast. Some people cannot read like that. They are going to be very, very slow the way they are, they are read that. Nobody stigmatizes them because of that. So this other gift as well, we do not need to stigmatize anybody. Just like every, all the other talents I've given us, like there are other talents I could go on and on and on and on, you know, that I could give. You don't need to look down upon them for any reason. Praise the Lord. I hope somebody gets what I'm saying today. And I hope somebody is um, challenged by what I, uh, you know, I, 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 I've said today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So his wife was barren, and the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren. And you have born no children, but you will conceive and bear a son. Now, please be careful. Not to, let's come to that <clears throat> later. Let's talk about this verse 3. Why did the angel re-emphasize to her, now you are barren, but you are going to have a child? Why? Because God is trying to say to us, it has those people you often look down upon, they are the ones I often use. Hallelujah. They are the ones that often raise up. They are the ones that often do fantastic things, unbelievable things out of their lives. Look at Hannah. Look at Elizabeth. Hallelujah. So if you stigmatize people and look down upon them and things, God has a way of saying those very ones that you look down upon, they are the ones that have a way of using. Amen. So the angel said, you are barren. In other words, that's the way people perceive you. But God, hallelujah. And I'm saying that to somebody today. <clears throat> As people look down upon you, you are the one that God will use in Jesus' mighty name. Finally, verse 4. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink or to have anything um, unclean. <clears throat> Hallelujah. He says, you are, going to be, you are going to conceive and you are going to bear a son. Therefore, please be careful the things you eat, be careful the things you drink and where you go, how you conduct yourself, don't do unclean stuff. In other words, not just the vessel that God is going to use, even the bearer of the vessel. Hallelujah. If I carry a vessel right now, all right, God is saying, not only must that vessel I'm carrying be clean, I who am carrying the vessel must be clean as well. That's what he was saying to this woman. So you are going to carry a vessel in your, inside you, that vessel that God is going to use. Not only is that vessel sanctified to the use of God, you who are the carrier of that vessel, sanctify yourself as well. The way of God. God has holiness. It's very, very important to him. And so in all that we do, let us remember, at times we are the vessel. At times we are not the vessel, but we are the bearer of the vessel. Hallelujah. In all of those things, he expects us to be clean and to be holy and to be righteous. Amen. And to be untainted and solid in any way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for sharing time. I hope you have enjoyed this. Please share with others as much as you can. God bless you. Thank you very much. One more time. Happy weekend.